Yeah, it's just me today. You announce the end. I'm, I'm commentating scoreboard camera three. All in one. Awesome. What can I say? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome to what's the name of the football field? Cougarville. Cougarville. No, that's that. That's even better. Obligatory coffee. Test, test, testicles. Uh, um, that, that got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, they say, uh, what, what's the other one? Um, If I have too many things in my hands. Hopping offense is timeless. That's right. Oh, we still got it. Oh, yeah. We still got it. Look at that. Got a day over 30 in this game. That's right. Got a day over 64. Some pretzels? Oh, I'm, I, I'm good, I know. All I need is my coffee. I would, I would argue. Spec, spec, spectacles. Spectacles. Oh, there we That's go. That's it. Spec, spec, spectacles. Test, test, testicles. I bet it's actually on. Let's see how many people are watching this. Oh, well, you can tell, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. With oh, the, how um, cool is that? I know. It's, uh, let's see. We're doing two games at once here. Any home runs this year? Have you been? Any home? Not for softball. I remember I did go to the baseball game against Gil St. Bernard's where there's no shortage of home runs. And really? Yeah. Unfortunately, it worked against. Oh, yeah. So we scored. Why? Was, was the uh, fence close? It was annoying. Um, no, so it was like the same thing, but um, what happened, no, so I, I missed, because I was coming right from my AP stat exam, so I missed um, Jack Amarada scoring a home run to make it 1-0, but then um, we were up like 6-2 and everything, everything was great, and Gil had like an unbelievable home run um, way past the fence to make it 6-5. And that was there or here? That was here, Yeah. Too. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then they scored another, I think, top of the seventh to they played the game. Yeah, they came through up six to at one point, and lost 12 to eight. Oh. I know. Up eight to six, too, and the, heading into the final inning, and I believe we had two outs in this eight to seven. And we, we just five straight. I mean, come on. All right, time to use the voice here. Welcome everybody to the middle school campus of MKA, where we have here today softball action for the Cougars taking on Irvington in what should be an exciting matchup underway for you. My name is Nicholas Baum, as Lucy Osterberg, the pitcher to start off the first sets of throws of the ball game, already off to the 0-2 count, and so the Cougars looking to bounce back off of what is currently a three-game losing streak. Most recently following, falling to the Minutemen of Newark Academy, and so we'll see if they could find that much-needed change in morale as already the three straight strikes offered up by Osterberg. Off to the races. This MKA defense will see if they can continue 
such trends into the next at bat. Straight through down the box to make it four straight from Osterberg. The junior already off to a fiery start here at the middle school. And so the Cougars six and seven. Now on the season, submerging below 500. After the skid, meanwhile, high flying ball able to be summoned by Amara Lerner to make it the second out. Lickety split. And off a matter of five pitches, two outs in the process. Quick work being made done of the Irvington Knights, I believe their mascot is. I'd have to double check. As Osterberg, seemingly at long last for Irvington, gets in the first ball of the day. And so, meanwhile, absolutely gorgeous weather here. Perfect day for softball. Any day's a good day for softball, but certainly under these conditions, might be better than ever. And so Osterberg, the star-studded pitcher for the Cougars ranks over the course of the season. Unfortunately able to make it a 3-0 working against the junior. And so success on the first two at-bats for the junior at the mound. We'll see if she can find similar here as what looks to be the undercooked fourth. Four straight balls in order to allot the third at-bat for Irvington straight off to first base. So the fourth batter in turn working for the visitors. And we'll see if Osterberg can cut short their first glimpse at the bat of the day. And so afterwards, looks to be room for the first strike. Meanwhile, trying to steal, able to succeed in the process. And seemingly under, MKA's nose is right there. Ducks on a pond for Irvington for the first time in this ball game. And larger need for some defensive action, make it 1-1, Snake Eyes the count. Working against the junior Osterberg. As some cheers can be heard from the respective sides. Straight down, some contact, ultimately after the foul ball. And so now resting with the next pitch from Osterberg, the opportunity to see through the top of the first inning. All resting right here for the pitcher. Straight through, swing and a miss. And that will do it in a very quick top of the first inning. MKA already seeing the sight of the bat. This is so sick. Are, are you off for the year? I'm done for the year. Done for the year. Bye bye, Wake. His first year in the books. Okay. So I didn't mean to interrupt your broadcast. But I think you can interrupt at any time. Testing. It's live. Well, we are here with an incredibly special guest, a veteran of the club of MKA TV. It is Casey Salzman in the booth. Casey, take it away. Thank you very much, Nick. It's great to be back. I never actually got to cover a softball game while I was here. This is a really exciting moment for me. Nick, I am I heard about so much you've been doing with MKA TV. I visited Mr. Clayton right before I came here. And I figured, you know what, I might as well surprise Nick here. I was thoroughly surprised, Casey. What can I say? It is simply an honor. I sent him a text immediately before showing up. You saw that text, right? Maybe. Oh, I saw. A t I sent you a text saying no one should have to commentate alone. No one should have to. <sighs> if you had seen that before I showed up, that would have been. Oh, that would have been, been legendary. That would have been legendary. Right there. Equally as legendary, though, the fact that I just turn around. Mm -hmm. No, I think you said it right there. Room for one more or something like yeah. that. And I turn around to see the legendary cougar behind the mic turned demon deacon. Yeah. Uh, Casey Salzman. It's unbelievable. It's an omnipotent presence here for the club. Definitely. <laughs> With so much servitude for our ranks and everything. All right, I hate to take attention away from the game. Let's go, let's focus on the game here. Let's oh, of start. course. 
Let's get straight to the action. So 3-0 count working against Ellie LaPiccolo, the first at-bat for the Cougars' day. Well, I probably miscounted right there, so now it's usually I trust the scoreboard right behind me, but operator seemingly sleeping behind the controls. I believe it's 2-0 now the count. I haven't seen that scoreboard be used in years. <laughs> and so I know. Well, perhaps new sights for you, Casey, here at the yeah, state-of-the-art like, turf facility. This new, I'm, I'm blown away by this new, by it, the new field. Isn't she something else? You could actually do two games at the same time now. Exactly. And that, that's what's happened here. And speaking of two games at the same time, also happening here at MKTV is girls lacrosse action too, over at Van Brunn Field. So new and improved since Casey's years last year, MKTV. Mm -hmm. As I forget to display the bases. There we go. That's better. I'm sorry if I'm distracting you. It's just you know. It's no. Gonna be, it's gonna be bad. This is unbelievable, I ladies to do and gentlemen. Much, much commentating at Wake, so I figured this is, this serves as a nice I, little like, reunion. <sighs> At the perfect reunion as Ellie tries to steal second low piccolo. Will be caught safe in the end. And excellent baseball IQ poised by the top of the batting order. Next up, Natalie Yu. And so, Casey, I know this maybe, oh, well, hold on. First off, an emphatic hit from Natalie Yu, unable to be caught. And the senior with a hefty hit to keep the streak going for MKA. First and second now occupied. Meanwhile, Casey, I, regardless of whether this has to do with anything regarding the game at hand or even MKTV, I want to hear about your first season over at Wake Forest down in North Carolina. Oh my God, it's been great. College life has been great, but you mm. know what? There's been a little little MKTV missing in my life. You know, it's good <sighs> to be back here. You love to see it, don't you? As Alex Barra, the next up at bat, withstanding the first strike, 0 oh and 1, the count, Lo Piccolo just trudging off of second base ever so slightly. And so we, we all could, could use some MKTV here. Now and then as Lo Piccolo tries to steal third, we'll be safe. Meanwhile, you able to drag away with second and the Cougars increasing their real estate value across the diamond. You know what, I'm probably going to get some work today, but you know what, it's completely worth it to be back in the commentating booth, checking out the MK softball, varsity softball team for the first time this season. Oh, yeah. And what so, is the team's record this year? Six and seven. Six and seven, that's a great record. But not necessarily reflecting their full might. Three-game skid, unfortunately, so at 1.6 and four, but certainly the opportunity to bounce back here today. Definitely. As Barra takes an absolute crack at it, ultimately out of bounds. And so, always a good day for MKA softball as three and one. They count now, but certainly we could all use some MKTV in our, in our lives. I'll certainly be missing that upon my departure to college. Definitely, we're gonna they're gonna miss you a lot. But from what I've heard, we have there's some new blood that's that's gonna keep it going next year. Some new blood. We should shall hope. Of course, our leaders of next year, Lucy Macron, who I do believe to be is the first female leader of MKTV in its history. Definitely. So, you know, Yas um, has the hit, hit down the middle. Right there. And she's got They're it. Driving two runs. You and Lo Piccolo able to sprint across home plate to make it two to the good for the Cougars. The perfect way to start off your ball game, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Barrett residing off of first base and not a single out to help the visitors. Well, perfect start to life in this seemingly perfect day, at least in terms of weather. Next up at bat, Amara Lerner. So another senior with sights for success. As the pitch, a legal pitch. And this is where the more experienced baseballing eyes of Casey fills in for me, because. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm not sure why that was an illegal pitch. I'm assuming it's because the batter was not prepared. Hmm, I see. It might be a little bit different because of softball. I'm not, there might be a difference, but you know, I could just be wrong. Well, Lerner will gladly accept that as the next one seemingly out for the ball, I would interpret. Yeah. Again, I will always forever trust Casey's judgment more than my own. It was a little bit of funny, funny play right there. Barrett decide, Barrett's on second now, right? Barrett is on Sorry, second, I don't contrary have a to my scoreboard. I'm just trying to go off your names. She went to steal second, and the catcher threw it to second base, but there's nobody covering the base. A uh, little bit of a doozy right there from Irvington. We'll see if they can regather their marbles. Still no outs to their name as Lerner 
oversees the next one, and that will be enough to see her off to first. So now first and second occupied for the Cougars. There might be ever more runs in the offing. Next up, Marin Ivers, the sophomore. We'll see what the underclassmen can conjure up here. To keep the streak going for the Cougars, the first one a little bit overcooked as runners scurry off to occupy third and second. Look at that. Definitely a great start for the Cougars in this game. And gutsy runners too. No shortage of confidence. Boys by the home side. So second and third occupied. One ball, no outs. The prospects looking beautiful for the Cougars as an emphatic hit right there. Oh. Unfortunately, a foul. That went over the fence, but not exactly the fence that they're aiming for. Oh, dear. The... A, there's a souvenir for a lucky fan. Exactly. <laughs> and hopefully not some property damage in the process. Probably. I would assume not. Hopefully not. Have you had any broken windows this year yet? <laughs> not sure, to be honest. <laughs> I don't, fortunately, I don't think so. It is a problem now with the new baseball yeah, field. I was about to a say, lot I, of balls. I feel like there could you, be broken windows it's here. A word of advice, don't park on Central or at least while the varsity baseball team is playing, because they have some heavy hitters, some absolute sluggers. Oh, excuse me while sluggers. I go move my car. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm on. <laughs> you, you fooled me there, that's for sure. Well, one thing, Casey, I do know you are doing at Wake Forest, some acting. I am doing that. I have had some fun doing <laughs> doing some acting. I have some fun stories, but if I told them on this, uh, on this, I'm, oh, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure uh, YouTube would give us an age restriction. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah, I don't want to get canceled here. Nonetheless, out on the field, base is loaded. The perfect circumstances for the Cougars to continue to run amok on their Irvington foes. Next up looks to be Lucy Osterberg, the junior. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'll bring back an, M an old MKA TV mainstay of mine. If you want to watch YouTube, that definitely won't be age restricted. And don't forget to subscribe to MKA TV. I like absolutely. This video. Keep watching. We make absolutely. Nick, Nick and the boys make. Mm. Mi well, sorry, I can't say Nick and the boys because we got a whole bunch of new people. Nick and the squad make. And the squad make plenty of great content. We oh absolutely. So many events. Nick, they're gonna miss you next year. They they are. What can I say? It's uh, it's been an incredible four years here and I hopefully I have a few more games left in me too but it's it, it's really saddening just looking back at all the years I, I'm, I'm so happy that I've had this opportunity that MKA has provided me with this opportunity to find my voice really much too before I walked into this I had no idea what commentary was I had no idea how to be a commentator Nick, you are a way better commentator than me I just want to say that <laughs> oh it, oh shucks shucks but it, the, the places that this club has taken me the, the people I've been able to meet the games I've been able to oversee the experiences I've been, I, I don't want to be too sentimental here, but it's truly been the unbelievable journey that I simply cannot uh, overstate enough, really. Uh, that's what all I have to say right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> can't, right, wait to watch the, can't wait to watch this recording back later, see so you hear your oh, reaction goodness. to me showing up. It's, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's going to be so funny. Oh no. I don't think I was muted for that. I might have been. Hopefully well, I wasn't. Hopefully I wasn't. When you showed up, like, like an angel ascending down from heaven, but it was actually Casey emerging out of Wake Forest. Thank you very much. As two and two. Well, I don't see the difference really. It's a full count right now. With bases loaded, full too. Count bases loaded. Always a dangerous situation, but you know, there's, only, there's no out, so no harm can come of this play for for the Cougars here. All resting with Osterberg, the high flying th throw almost decapitates the junior but she'll easily enough be sent over to first, and that will make it three for the Cougars. Interestingly enough, I thought that might have even hit her bat, but I don't think, but I guess not. Regardless, she'll take some assistance off of that one. Next up, Madi Lamusio, the freshman. Already with 3-0, the score line. You can see Ivers, meanwhile, in frame, trying to cheat off of second right now. What the opportunity it could be if Lerner decides to just go for it, full send, and steal home. So 3-0, one ball working against the freshman. Straight through, skidding off the Astro turf. And so, Casey, I, I really have to say, of course it's after we leave the middle school that they plant this unbelievably beautiful state-of-the-art facility. It would be it would have right been here. so nice to spend <sighs> spend just just an afternoon just chilling on this turf. Are, Unbelievable, are you kidding me? right? I mean, come on. Even in my JV days in high school and everything, we, I mean, we had like some absolute mud fests 
like playing soccer here and I play, everything. I played baseball for plenty of years. I never got to play. I don't, I don't oh, think goodness. I've ever played on a turf field. That, that's hard to believe. I don't on think I've ever field. played on a turf field. It's 2023, and Casey's never played on a turf field. Yeah, because I stopped playing baseball back in like the eighth grade. Ah, oh, but still. Why do you think I became a commentator of MKTV? <laughs> exactly, but you know, frankly, I'd, I'd much rather become a commentator. As yet again, back-to-back -back walks operating for the Cougars, able to make it four to the good. Next up at bat is Audrey Solomon, the fellow freshman, looking to increase the ever so developing tally for the Cougars to keep the steam going at full speed. Already able to get in the strike. We'll see when Irvington says enough is enough. Not even one out working for them. All conjured up, swing and a miss. Oh, and two. The count working against Solomon. You ever had it where a ball's fl flown this way and had to move the camera? Oh, goodness. We've had some scary instances in games past, really, where you have, especially with uh, Amara Lerner, I swear, one of these days she's actually going to do it. It's always, it always seems to be her with, a, with an absolute magnificent swing, so much power on it, and it comes straight in our direction. Fortunately, it stops about five or so feet ahead of the camera, and so sparing us the many hundreds of dollars and an angry um, email from... I don't know, whoever would be in charge of refinancing all this entire venture. I don't think Clayton would be mad at us if it's a total, total circumstance. No, I'd be happy, if anything, because that indicates a home run, right, if, if we're stationed ahead of the uh, fence. Meanwhile, out on the pitch, at long last, the first strikeout of the ball game for Irvington, Audrey Solomon sent off right there. And then next up is Eunice Fernandez, I want to say. My apologies to Eunice in advance if I butcher her last name or if I say the incorrect last name. Nonetheless, bases loaded yet again for the Cougars. Four up in just the first inning of play here at the middle school. And then also, of course, we, we have the turf field, but we also have some other elements of a renovation. You yeah, have there's, the like a court, there's like a whole courtyard up there. Now. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like a hotel almost, we you didn't know? Have a, I didn't have a courtyard. You did not have a courtyard. Neither did I, actually. I, I, feel, I feel betrayed, you know, that they wait until after we left. True, but my younger brother's got, do, got the this The infrastructure. Now. Oh, he, he, he's, you got it. He's, he's got this. He'll hopefully be on. A know, future staple he'll of MKTV. He'll hopefully be a future staple of MKTV. And if you're, and he, he's not, I'm going to make him watch this video and feel very guilty and replay this part oh. over and over again. You, Teddy, you, if you're watching <laughs> this in two years, <laughs> Teddy, what are you doing, man? You, you love to hear it. Casey Saul, Salzman with the guilt trip. <laughs> to get him back into MKTV. Well, we already have some prospective members of MKTV. Fifth grader Jackson Dechter, of course, really? younger brother of Morgan Dechter. He has lent us his voice for hockey, for lacrosse, really? and I do believe for some baseball too. And he's got he's got himself a voice. You, you know, know he can. Want to know a fun fact about Jackson Dechter? I was oh. actually, I am actually Jackson Dechter's former babysitter. Really? really? The former babysitter of Jackson Dechter. So we can both attest to the greatness of the middle schooler. I'll, 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 I'll tell him to check this out. Check us out. Absolutely raving Definitely. about the young bug. And so, oh, and won the count. Recycling back to the top of the batting order. Ellie LaPiccolo with a massive swing. Looks to be over towards right field. And the camera embarrassingly misses the catcher. I might have gotten some of that. But the first baseman makes the catch. There's two outs for the Cougars now. At long last, too, you might sense for Irvington. Quite the long bottom of the first inning with run after run accrued for the Cougars. And so five to nothing now. Next up, Natalie Yu yet again. Let's see what can be conjured up here. Room for the first ball. And so, Salzman, we know you said you were missing some MKTV, but any, the thing you missed most in general from MKA, any word of advice? Ooh, you see, that's a, you see, that's very difficult to say. Well, meanwhile, back out on the field, able to get the third out, and that will just about do it at long last for Irvington. Back to the top of the second order. Is there a mute button? Uh, 
Oh yeah, it's this thing. If you yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. You don't have the new equipment and everything. Well, I do for glasses. Yeah. For a while, but you oh, I see. There's, so there hasn't been that much commenting on this before. Well, if there has been, I just haven't really gotten into it. But like, it's been really Cause that's one thing. Like I'm super like interested in like the opportunity to continue doing this like at Columbia. I've, at Wake Forest, they do have it. I just haven't done. I just haven't done. So is it like a club almost, just like I'm paid to be like a commentating club? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and so and like, it might be different. It's probably different at Columbia. That's just how it is at Wake Forest. I see. I, I just need to have like. I need to keep this going. Yeah, I, no, it's gonna be, dude. You have you have. I, I want to let you know this, and I don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You have a genuine commentating. I want you to know that. You're Thanks, really man. Good. I. I, I yeah, you know, I, I need these I affirmations. Got so, like every single time, my older brother heard you and me commenting. He's like, "That other guy, like, you suck." Dude. It was. I really well, hope these mics are off. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. It, it was for, for me. That was like the case, like my sophomore year, when like I would be talking alongside like Joe and Percy. It was like they have. Well, back out underway to start out the top of the second inning. I will relay the assessment to a more experienced um, judger of um, baseball or softball. Um, I, I'll group the two sports inward enough. And so, Casey, your assessment on the first inning of action here. Well, the Cougars, well, I didn't see the top of the inning, so I feel kind of bad about that. But for the bottom of the inning, Cougars batted great. Couple of hits, couple of walks, great all around. Cougars kept it together. Always great. To, once you have a lead in, ba in baseball or softball, it's always a great thing. You just got to maintain that, play good defense, play good offense, keep it going. Absolutely. Well, an astute analysis, as always, provided by the MKA TV veteran himself, the Cougar churned Demon Deacon, but he finds himself back on Montclair soil at long last. Quite the interesting story, if I may retell it. The time when. Um, I believe it was, was it junior or sophomore year? I, I believe it was sophomore year when um, we when we were filming the last girls uh, soccer game of the season and the um, girls soccer parents surprised us. Uh, Casey wasn't here, it was me, Jonah, and Siebes. And um, the girls soccer parents, they surprised the three of us um, with these goodie bags with a bunch of candy and everything, but then also with a each a $100 Visa gift card. It was, it was an unbelievably kind and gracious gift. But anyways, so they they gave the one intended for Jonah, they gave the one intended for Siebes, but then the one they gave me, it was actually supposed to be for Casey, but I was filling in for him in that day, and so I technically stole the candy and the money from Casey. Um, I did end up having the, um, the Kit Kats, and I ended up giving the Reese's to my brothers. But the $100 gift card, it <laughs> stayed on the top of my bedroom dresser for two years, over two years. As a matter of fact, all with the intention that one day I will um, give it back to Casey. And at long last, they, you were, you I did it. <laughs> I did it. I gave him back the 100 but then I, I added in a 20 to factor in for inflation. Because at that point, that was... And you didn't have to do that, and I thank you for that. I did not, I did not have to do that, but you know what? The, the economics within me, you know, that's... I, I do like to give an astute economic analysis, and so I believe that was pre-pandemic, so inflation's taken its toll since then. I was like, you know what? If Casey wants to put this to the gas or anything, I know it's going to be more expensive. I'll give him the 20. And so just like that, two years down the road, I finally gave the Visa gift card back to Casey. So I'm a... I, I'm innocent at long last. That was just such a heavy weight on me that was weighing down on me for years. Hey, you did it, man. But you I did it. did it. I did it. You know, so the procrastination finally withered away in the end. I know that feeling. And so, meanwhile, back out on the turf 
facility of the MKA Middle School campus, first and second, occupied by the visiting Irvington, and no outs to the name of Osterberg or the MKA defense, looking to make it otherwise with the 0-1 count, make it Snake Eyes. And I don't know if Snake Eyes is actually what's used by baseball commentators. I it's like to, not, I like to it's use not, it. It's not, but, I like it's to not use a, it. but it's not a bad thing to call a 1-1 count. I like to use it. 1-1 count's too boring. As the hit right there looks to be infield, Actually not, with the thunderous cries of the umpire stationed behind home plate, foul ball, and so one and two is now in order. And so after quick work being made done of Irvington at the top of the first with a bit more of a prevalent say at the swing of things, heading into the top of the second, first and second occupied, still no outs as the hefty hit right there. Able to be caught by Barra. Switch straight to first. Got the double play, I think. Yeah, that would be a double play. Well, was she caught out on her way to first? Yes, she. Well, no, she caught. She caught the line, the pop out, and then they got, and then they doubled her up base running. And so, indeed, that does look to be a second right there. An unbelievable double play pulled off by the Cougars, and that is exactly perhaps the most perfect instance of why we have Casey Salzman alongside me in the in the booth here. Thank you you know, much, he's Nick. off to college, but he, he's still finding himself bailing me out <laughs> in the uh, softball commentary. Yo, if you ever have any questions and I'm not here, just uh, send me a text and I swear I will Send a text it. all the way from North Carolina. He'll I will answer give, it, I swear. He'll offer me quite the clear-cut response. Mr. Smith has to see this too. Mr. Smith, we have Casey here. How you doing? Mr. Smith also equally as surprised by the return of Casey Salzman himself as the third one caught by Lucy Osterberg to send MKA back to the at-bat to increase potentially their run on the board. Back out underway to start out the bottom of the second, almost the top <laughs> of the second. It is Alex Barra, the fellow senior, to supervise what could be the ushering in of a continuation of MKA's absolute barrage of runs found at the bottom of the first five straight offered up for the Cougars, only to be met with at long last an improvised response from Irvington seeing the three outs. And so, quite the long bottom of the first inning. We'll see if the Cougars can drag out this bottom of the second. Meanwhile, in their efforts to secure a mercy rule victory, to snap the three-game losing streak, and to return to 500, seven and seven. The record that could potentially await the hosting MKA side, 3-0 the count, in order to potentially send Barra on her way, a voyage to first in the offing, potentially. And so, brief recapitulation of the record as that ball just about irks into the box. MKA started 
the season off with an emphatic 22 to 4 victory against four. the wow. Red Raiders of Newark Eastside. That is quite the tally right there. Followed by back-to-back -back losses against West Orange and Wallington as the hit right there from Barra sees itself out for the full count. So losses to West Orange and Wallington, followed by back-to-back -back wins over the Techs, Newark Tech, and then West Caldwell Tech, 17-2 loss afterwards to Belleville, then followed West by... West Caldwell Tech was a thing. West Caldwell, neither did I. But, you know, they, they popped themselves out. Well, we played them in basketball. Apologies to all the West, West Caldwell Tech uh, families listening. Families listening in. I know there's a bunch, actually. We, we know a lot of West Caldwell <laughs> Tech uh, families listening on the MK TV broadcast. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're out in full droves. Um, all, all of them. Our apologies to you all. Um, West Caldwell Tech folk, we did play them in, in basketball. Otherwise, I would not have heard of them whatsoever. All right. Meanwhile. Assuming that before the basketball game, though, you hadn't heard of them. Oh, no, I had no clue. Zero. Even though they're supposed to be, like, kind of nearby us. Okay, why are we talking about West Caldwell Tech? Let's focus on Yeah, our game. apologies. Anyway. As learner. Ball popped up, and it goes <laughs> over the fence. Yeah, over the fence, onto the dugout, and probably over the other fence. And so, by extension, into somebody else's lawn. So, somebody else's problem in the process, but they'll have a lucky souvenir. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, my God, I love the, called, I love the souvenir joke. Lerner with the 0 and 1 count swings and does not make the necessary contact. And so 0 and 2, the opportunity seemingly in the offing for Irvington to initiate the clean sheet over the Cougars after admitting five straight at the bottom of the first. Could be done right here. A little bit undercooked. 1 and 2. Oh my, oh my, it's just such a beautiful day for softball here. I know, I'm incredibly surprised at how nice the weather has been here. Like, oh, I, yeah. like I've been in North Carolina, the weather's been pretty nice there, but I've heard it's been like kind of kind of a little mucky here. Oh goodness, well, last we don't talk about last weekend. Oh my God, what happened last weekend? Last weekend, the weather was like right, absolute droves too. Right down the middle, nice little single. Oof. And Lerner finding herself occupying first. The senior giving way for the sophomore, Marin Ivers, next up. And so the weather, we don't talk about the weather last week. I was commentating um, for my uh, side gig. MKTV comes first, obviously, but with this other um, uh, amateur soccer sort of place that I commentate for. We were out in Secaucus, right next to the river and everything. Rain, horrible. Oh, it Meanwhile, the right field, it's over the head of the right fielder. Inbounds in the process. You'll have to scoop deep in order to find traces of it. Meanwhile, Lerner scrambling to third. Ivers over to second. And Ball it's goes out of play, so <sighs> forced to stay at second base, but still a great, a great double. It's an unbelievable piece of contact made right there by Marin Ivers. And off to the races. The underclassman goes off, two ducks on a pond in the offing for the Cougars. And so, in the midst of what just could have been the second out for Irvington, it's a complete reversal in tides in the second inning. Second and third occupied. Next up, Osterberg. Normally the pitcher finding herself on the other end of these throws now. We'll see if she can find some more success. Straight down. Evading even the catcher. And so, yeah, stormy, horrible weather last weekend. But when it... Ah, oh, dang, I, I'm at a loss for the correct quote. But... It, it, oh, it, the bad times allow you to truly appreciate the good times, to paraphrase oh, my I know thoughts. That feeling. And so, with that in mind, perhaps the true opportunity to embrace the absolutely luxurious weather here in Montclair, New Jersey. Exactly. Now, here where the suburbs meet the city, I don't know if Wake Forest, whether its location is reminiscent of Montclair, is it? Is it a town? It is. Well, Wake Forest is a town, but the Wake Forest University is not actually in Wake Forest, North Carolina. It's oh. actually in a town called Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Oh, it's I've heard definitely. Of that. It's a, nice, it's a nice town. Weather is a little bit more consistently nice in this. It took a while for it to get hot, to, for it to get like really cold in the winter, but then it also kind of took a little bit of time. Sorry, you know, I'm interrupting from the game. A little ground uh, up, but the Cougars ended up scoring another run in that play. Just what the doctor ordered for MKA as Ivers resides on third base. A sacrifice in the process, however. Uh, the second out accrued at long last for Irvington. They'll need one more to silence the Cougars from the at-bat, but not before going down without a run of their own. And so we'll see which team prevails on the next at-bat. Looks to be Madi Lamusio, the freshman. Next up in the batting order. So the Cougars able to find runs in back-to-back -back innings. 
quite the dominatory scoreline straight in the driver's seat. The hosting MKA. Meanwhile, Ivers with the gutsy stance of trying to seemingly steal home, at least the way she's positioning, trudging off of third base, one and one, snake eyes. I'm going to continue to coin that term. You know, I kind of like calling Don't one you like count it. snake eyes. Don't you snake like eyes. it? It's, it's kind of creative. It's not, thank a bad, you. it's not a bad name, honestly. Thank you. I feel like right? professional commentators could use that. Right? Well, just like how like a, on a pair of die, you have like one and one. That's like a snake eye. Yeah, exactly. Why can't you apply it to the scoreboard right here? Honestly, it makes perfect Why not? sense. It, come on. It, it's, it's the little things, you know? So, exactly. It's the little it's little flares like that that give this channel its personality. If you want to see more personality from, from MKA TV, be sure to subscribe to us. Absolutely. Salzman's got it right, and so does Lamusio. She actually Straight off to first. Struck out there, but they dropped the third strike, which means you can run the first base, and she made, and she beat it out. So, it run scored there, so now it's 7-0 to zero Cougars. And the freshman with quite the baseball IQ poised on that front. Meanwhile, Ivers in the process, seizing the opportunity, sprinting across home plate, and just like that, an unbelievable score line, an absolute onslaught of runs, one after another, seven to nothing. The Cougars lie with their next at-bat. Looks to be Audrey Solomon, the only Cougar to have struck an out this game. We'll see if the freshman can turn things around. Of course, the little sister of Eli Solomon over on the other side of the middle school campus where he would be playing baseball. But I do believe baseball has an away game. I heard a rumor that Eli Solomon's done some commentary this year. Is that true or no? Has he done some? I actually have no clue. I don't know. Has he done some commentary? I don't know. I he, he, he definitely made some jokes about MKTV being a little bit nerdy because I was in because he did percussion. Be, us being last. nerdy. Us being nerdy. Us being nerdy. The I'm audacity. Like, I'm like, bro, are you I, really gonna say that? It says, says the guy who like has me. Um, okay, you know, edit his like giant know, let's papers. Stop talking about you like Solomon before we end up. <laughs> Unbelievable. These accusations <laughs> here. <laughs> These are wow. You know, Eli's gonna watch this and laugh. Very unsubstantiated. Eli's gonna watch this and laugh. He knows right, 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 as his little sister. Grips the bat. <laughs> Eli knows I love him. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, we, we'll get to the bottom of this and keep you posted in the process. Nonetheless, it is his little sister. Up at bat. Swings and misses. One and two. And so, MKA Baseball, meanwhile, the back and forth season for them. Of course, after securing Prep B Glory last year. Unfortunately, fell to Gil St. Bernard's, the team that they also fell to in the States last year. That was on this field with much different weather. It was rather stormy then, a few days ago. So two and two the count. Man on second, swings and misses to see through the third out of the bottom of the second. Irvington at long last mounts the necessary defense to find themselves gripping the bat one more time. Well, Nick, I think that might be it for me, but, it's been, a, but it's been a great time commentating with you, being back here. <sighs> Good luck with the rest of this game. Have fun with the rest of the season. Words cannot describe the joy I found when I saw, when I turned around and I saw Casey Salzman just hovering over me. It, it, it's, it's a true, I would not say privilege, I would say it's an honor to be here in the booth with you, Thank Casey. You Thank much, you Nick. so it much. I'm wishing lot, you all the best. Please make um, surprise returns to MKTV in the years coming. Whenever I can, I promise. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Casey. No problem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was just blessed with the presence of Casey Salzman right here in the booth. And I, I am just, 
at a loss of words almost. The veteran MKA TV leader, the former president himself, and quite the privilege it was to be speaking with him for one and a half innings. Meanwhile, quite the privilege that the Cougars are finding themselves in on this beautiful, gorgeous Monday. Not always the case that you can call a Monday a gorgeous day, but certainly the circumstances prime in order to accrue such an assessment. As man off to first base, seven to nothing. Cougars with an absolutely dominant stance over their Irvington foes. And seemingly with room for even more to be said, Osterberg on the throw, eligible for the strike. And so, always a good day when Casey makes a surprise return to MKTV, his true home, I would say. As the hit right there, able to be inbounds, forcing Lamusio to run all the way back. Then running around, runners on third and second. Two ducks on a pond for Irvington, and that was just the wake-up call they needed right there. In a game when they've been struggling to improvise or conjure up just about anything. The emphatic hit down to left field, and that's just what the doctor ordered for the visitors. We'll see if they can repeat some more success. Still no outs working against them. Caught by Osterberg, and subsequently caught by Lerner. Just like that, the next pitch afterwards eligible for the first out. As I drink my iced coffee right here, I am a, well, yet again, a one-man team operating scoreboard, camera, and commentary. And so, any complaints you may have, please assign them not towards me, but towards the lack of anybody else. Yes, the pitch right there from Osterberg. Unfortunately, not enough, two and one. They count with one out, nonetheless, assisting the Cougars still. Runners grimacingly looking at third and second. The opportunity seemingly to get on the board for Irvington. Three and one. The count, could they just about get? Loaded bases, the visitors. Could be awaited on the next pitch right here from Osterberg, the star pitcher for this softball lineup, who's certainly accrued a number of strikeouts and glory over the course of this season, and that one will be enough to send off loaded bases for Irvington. In an opening two set of innings that has brought with them just so very little. Now the opportunity for things to almost explode for the visitors. Loaded bases, only one out working against them. And you can see the runner ever so cheating off third base right there, hungry to at long last get one run at least, but easily enough potential for more for Irvington. Want to know the count. High flying swing. Able to be caught by Lerner and make it two outs. And so Irvington will have to wait just a bit longer if they are to break the stalemate, that break that bagel that they have on the score line as of right now. Two outs, but bases loaded. Who will strike first at this top of the third inning? Osterberg placing the bid. That'll be her home MKA side. High arcing pitch, however may complicate things, 1-0. and oh. And so, need I remind you, the stakes at the line for the Cougars, a return to 500, and the opportunity to snap a three-game lose streak in what could be the final set of fixtures in the softball calendar. Mixed results, but nonetheless a storied success of a season for the team as the long hit right there all the way into the outfield. And at long last, Irvington able to get on the board. They found a lone one, but it is enough to interrupt the aforementioned Beagle on the scoreboard. So two outs working against them, but nonetheless, base is loaded. And so a matter of who would strike first, and it was the visiting Irvington side. At long last, able to get that single one working for them. So cutting the lead ever so slightly to six. We'll see if Osterberg can draw a line in the sand. Meanwhile, some element of words offered by the umpire. Not quite sure what was being said. This is exactly the sort of stance where I would appreciate if Casey Salzman was with me to explain what exactly the umpire was talking about. Nonetheless, up for the next at-bat for Irvington. Still two outs working against them. Osterberg looking to, at long last, finalize 
their glimpse at offensive glory. And for the ball. 1-0 now. Meanwhile, quite the vocal chant emanating from the dugout of Irvington as the pitch in there. Good enough for 1-1. One one. So Snake Eyes on the board assisting Osterberg. And what could just be the final at-bat for the top of the third. Nonetheless, Irvington quite the vocal presence over here at the middle school campus. Can't necessarily hear that same roar emanating from the MKA dugout as one and two. The opportunity with the next pitch from the junior to see through. And yeah, she's got it. Not quite, however. Well, actually, not without a hiccup. MKA able to retreat off for the bottom of the third inning. Seven to one the score. Back out underway to start the bottom of the third inning here at the middle school. Already off to quite the heavy start, however, for the Cougars. Looks to be fielded inbounds. And just like that, able to populate first base. And so off to the races after just the second pitch offered up. The Cougars looking to repeat some more success found in the first two innings. And so smooth sailing for the hosting side heading in to the bottom of the third. Next up, back to the top of the batting order, Ellie LaPiccolo. The junior offers up the bunt, straight off to first, unsuccessful, and she'll be caught out, nonetheless assisting her teammate in her hopes to get to second. And so a trade-off made right there from the Cougars. First out, assisting Irvington, but nonetheless, man on second in their bid to potentially achieve the mercy rule victory over their visiting foes, Irvington. 
Of course, I do believe in order to get a Mercy Roll victory, it'll have to be a lead of 10 or more heading into the fifth inning, or after five innings. As a hit right there, Natalie Yu on her first pitch on the at-bat, able enough to send the man across home plate, Eunice. And so just like that, you on first, but make it eight for the Cougars right there. Quite the long run. As Barra withholds punt. Meanwhile, you easily enough able to steal second. And so it is Eunice Fernandez. I was right the first time. And so Fernandez able to head across right there to find it eight for the Cougars. As the overcooked throw right there, assisting Barra and you at the moment, eight to one. The Cougars with a dominant grip on the scoreline and still with seemingly more to offer up right here, the senior Barra finds it 2-0. And so more work will be needed in order to dwell. The fastly running Cougars soaring away with this lead over the first few innings. We'll see if they can populate it further. Back to the glory of a seven run lead. And Barra, of course, the experienced guys of the senior captain. Certainly the circumstances prime and opportune to make it even more. Make it three. Sorry, four. Must have missed a ball right there. And so, nonetheless, first and second. Now occupied for the Cougars, increasing the value of their holdings. Next up, Amara Lerner. And we've seen Lerner time and time again throughout this season. Quite the heavy hitter that the first baseman has made a name for herself with. Let's see what the senior can offer here. In for the strike. So a strike in and out. All that's to offer in terms of respite for Irvington right now as they look to play defense for the third time today. Straight down the middle. Quite the thunderous strike right there. May able to make it. Actually, no, not quite. Snake eyes on the board. And as I try to rely on my own judgment, actually one and one the count. Lerner, two and one. Nonetheless, still first and second occupied for the Cougars and seemingly with the heavy swing of Lerner's bat, the opportunity for things to explode here at the middle school. All coming off right here, down on the ground. You in pursuit for third. Barra easily enough able to make second. And so, even after the duration of the throw, the Cougars ever so increasing. The prospects for something magical here. Still only one out working against them, three and one. So the opportunity right here to get bases loaded and they've got it. Lerner off to first. And so it's the senior trio occupying first, second, and third. As Marin Ivers, the next up right here, can she be the one to get in a whole flood of runs at the at-bat, still only one out working against them. The circumstances prime for something amazing here. That's the first one. In there, into the upper echelons of the box, 0-1. Oh She'll need two more where that came from, working off the mound, straight through, able to make it 0-2. Oh and, and picking up some steam just when she needs it right here. Base is loaded. For the Cougars, of course, the experienced swing of Ivers. All that will be needed to send the trio of seniors heading across home plate. That one, however, a little bit too much working for it. One and two the count. And so we'll see if Ivers can climb out of the early 0-2 and lend some assistance towards some seniors as they vie to run across home plate. Still some work needed to be done from the sophomore. Swings, able to get enough contact, straight down. You will be safe. And base is loaded for the Cougars and a ninth found for MKA. And you right there exercising some pep in her step in spite of the minimal distance found on that hit. It was the senior able to run across even though the catcher staring the ball straight in the face. The senior able to make it nine for the Cougars, their largest lead of the ball game, following the blood in one run found at the top of the third. And so one and oh. The count 
And as for MKA, Lucy Osterberg, next up, of course, the pitcher herself that's featured time and time again throughout the softball campaign of 2023. Now on the other end of these throws, 1-0. Straight through, a hefty hit from the junior, looks to be in field. Unable to be caught from the right field. That was not a voice crack. That was not a voice crack. That was a deliberate use of my voice, I swear. As Lerner, able to come across home play. Ivers in pursuit for third. She's got it. And make it two runs for the Cougars. Quite the unbelievable play right there. A confidence in no shortage for the home side. First it was Barra, and then it was Lerner. And just like that, risking it, especially Lerner, as she veered across home plate, assessing there was enough time to get in that 11th for the Cougars. So now second and third occupied both ducks in a pond for MKA. And still with seemingly more to add, Mahdi Lamusio next up. Still only one out, meanwhile, working against them. So currently in Mercy Rule territory as Lamusio, the freshman, offers up quite the storied hit. Heading across home, and Ivers will be safe to make it 12 for the Cougars. Simply one run after another, five straight at the bottom of the third. And absolutely running amok against Irvington. Still only one out working against them. Quite the good day in the office as of right now for MKA. Next up, meanwhile, Audrey Solomon will see if she can share in the love as Lamusio, easily enough, able to take second. So second and third. Still occupied for the Cougars. Still nagging away at the opposing Irvington end. Trying to even ramp up the pressure ever so more. As the throw in there for the strike. And so MKA absolutely running wild as of late. In this bottom of the third, it's been nonstop success for the Cougars, allotting one man after another across home plate right here. And at long last, we'll see if Irvington finds their voice on the defensive. They found the early out. Can they go ahead and find the second off of Audrey Solomon at bat? She was struck out earlier in the matchup and will find herself with it again. Two outs at long last found for Irvington. We'll see if that is the much needed refuge for them or if MKA will increase their scoring antics. That's next up right here. Offered in for the strike. And it does look to be Serena Nguyen, or Nguyen. If I've operated with that last name before, I believe it's Nguyen. But my apologies to the freshman if I do get that wrong. So Serena Nguyen, the next up at bat. One and one, the count working against the underclassman. Has the hit to make it one and two. And yet again, I'll say at long last, for the opposing Irvington side, the opportunity to end the barrage of MKA runs, to end the bottom of the third. All coming right here, straight through. Not quite. One, sorry, two and two. That count now for Irvington. So Serena Nguyen for the first time today, up at bat. Putting in a bit of a fight right there to make it the full count. Now can the freshman and her first at bat make it full bases? for MKA to yet again explode on the offensive. Has the hit to it to up the pressure against the pitcher. And quite the battling presence of the freshman to stay this long on the at bat. Three and two, full count. And she looks to see the light of another pitch. Straight through, takes a hit to it. And yet again, another foul ball. There looked to be some interference, however. Whether it was from the umpire or from the catcher, we won't argue with it, however. And Serena Nguyen, much to the cheers of her teammates in the dugout, sent off to first base. And now, just like that, base is loaded for the Cougars. And who else to send them all across home plate than Ali LaPiccolo, top of the batting order yet again for the Cougars. And not every day will you have the top of the batting order play twice in one inning, 
Meanwhile, Lamusio sent a third and what looks to be Osterberg across home plate to make it 13 for the Cougars. Not quite sure what the official ruling would be or what that what the consequences entail. That's certainly a question for Salzman if he were still here, but nonetheless, he has missed quite the emphatic, audacious inning for the Cougars. Six straight offered up from MKA. Runs galore for the home side here. And of course, Ellie LaPiccolo now with men on third and first. The heavy hit straight off into the outfield. Unable to be caught, no room for the ground rule double. And off to the races. The junior goes, heading straight off to third. Nguyen able to trudge across home plate to make it 14. Sorry, no, 15 for the Cougars. And just like that, LaPiccolo off the hit right there, able to sprint all the way over to third base. Well, quite the running play right there from the junior off the immaculate hit to keep the streak alive for MKA. They found eight in the bottom of the third inning. No let up in sight. And now the junior staring down home plate. You oversees the strike. And so I was calling it before. Top of the batting order, LaPiccolo trusted with the duty of stirring things over into the outfield, and she just did so right there. So already occupying third and grimacing at home plate. We'll see if MKA can ever so increase their tally. What the opportunity could be to get double digits in one inning alone. You able at long last to be cut, and Irvington, after seemingly an eternity of MKA scoring action, is able to see the light of a top of the fourth inning. And so back out to start the top of the fourth inning. Irvington clenching the bat, but not before emitting eight straight runs at the bottom of the third inning. What a terrific performance from this Cougar side right here in an absolutely amazing day in the office for MKA. Supervised by simply beautiful Monday afternoon here at the middle school camp campus. Camp Liss, I don't know. Got tongue tied there, might need some more coffee as my iced coffee turns warm in light of the absolutely beautiful weather that we have here in 07042. I believe the count is one and one as I'm forced to trust my own judgment amidst the lack of scoreboard operations, make that two and one. But 
warm temperatures and a seemingly clear horizon of light blue with a few scattered white clouds as the heavy hit and told. Hopefully not hitting a middle schooler on the playground. Two and two in the count. And so if only Casey Salzman can see what the absolute sense of domination MKA served in the third inning. Irvington, of course, saw their first run. So perhaps third inning, the most successful for both of the two sides. Nonetheless, eight straight offered up from MKA at the bottom of the first as the heavy hit right there straight to outfield. Able to be caught by Serena Nguyen. An unbelievable play from the freshman and sending in an absolute sense of roar from her side. An unbelievable play from the freshman retreating outwards in center field. And we got a good look at that one right there. Serena Nguyen sprinting backwards and able to get off the very difficult catch to make it the first out in the top of the fourth for the Cougars. Unbelievable play right there from Nguyen. And MKA, of course, cheering on their teammate in the process. They'll need two more where that came from to see the light of the at-bat. Of course, three straight innings scoring runs, but of course that third one was certainly the most important of them right there. Eight straight offered up to make it 15 to one as Osterberg, easily enough, able to offer up the second out of the fourth inning. Quick work being made done of the opposing Irvington side right here. An absolute domination, a stronghold over the tally since the first inning. MKA with no let up in sight, putting pedal to the metal, Osterberg yet again. Supervising the third at-bat for the top of the fourth. Can it be three at-bats and three outs? We wait to see. A no-hitter fourth inning, potentially on the line for the junior at the mound, two and O. Oh. The count in the process. And seemingly few better days for softball in this 2023 campaign than such as right here. Beautiful weather and a beautiful score line from the Cougars vantage point. 14 run lead. Absolute omnipotence is the best way I can put it. Nonetheless, the walk over to first is enough to see some glimpse at outer diamond territory for Irvington. We'll see if they can at least scrape together what could be their second run of the ball game. Could just be consolation at this point. That's the high flying ball right there. Enough to be caught from Osterberg to see through. Irvington stance at bat. And just like that, as you can see, Nguyen just about swallowed by some cheering teammates right there. Oh, look at that. Well, they're happy with the young freshman outfielder, aren't they? And so I don't believe it's the end of the matchup, but they're certainly nonetheless excited with the outfielder. Nonetheless, the score 15 to one, and yet again, the Cougars will be the ones gripping the bat at the bottom of the fourth. Well, actually, no. And this is awkward. That actually was the mercy rule found there, and so Perhaps I could do a better job of educating myself with the mercy rule, but that will actually do it here at the middle school campus. The final score, 15 to one for the Cougars of MKA. On behalf of everyone here at MKTV, my name is Nicholas Baum. Formerly there was Casey Salzman bidding farewell and see you next time.